Hello, and in today's video, we're going to continue the Enterprise series by covering how to use a new feature called Geometric Roots in Flat Hub 2. Geometric Roots are designed to allow you to capture an entire building or objects ready to create 3D models. I wanted to do this because I haven't seen this explained properly yet. Um, I did see a video from DJI just the other day. Ironically, the DJI tutorial starts by telling you to create a 3D model to import into the planning software. That seemed a bit backward to me. And strangely, the import button they talked about doesn't show on my system, perhaps because I'm not using DJI Terra. But for simplicity and speed, I'm going to show you how to plan this directly in Flight Hub and point out a few things you have to be very careful about when running these missions. I'm going to show you two different captures, one being a polygon and the other a cylinder. So for the polygon, we're going to plan a capture around this old hotel. So go into the flight route library, click on the plus and select geometric route. Now, Notice that this option is only available at this time for the Mavic 3 Enterprise and the Matrice. So select which drone you're going to be using. Set your takeoff location or reference point. This is important because it helps set the start location. And if you accidentally place it on the other side of the building from where you're standing, it's going to try to fly through the building to get to that. Don't ask me how I know this little nugget. Now start by clicking around the building to mark the outline of the building. And once you have the building outlined, click on a green check mark to say you're done. Now on the right hand side, change to the 3D map to set the height. You'll be able to move the mouse up and down to set the height of the object you're capturing. This is probably where the 3D import would work and give you some benefit as you'd be able to see it. But since I don't have that, I'm going to have to do it based on knowing how tall the building is. You can see the altitude above your start point on the left hand side. And since I know this building is a bit over 300 feet, I'm going to set it to 300 feet. Once you have the height set, you'll see a flight route has been generated that creates a facade around the outside of the building and also creates an oblique capture above the building. And I want to mention that it is an oblique capture, meaning the camera will capture multiple angles as it flies that top route. For more information on that, see my previous video on oblique captures, which I'll link to at the top. You can turn off the top capture by using the include base toggle switch. If all you need is the facade, then go ahead and turn that off. But if you're looking to create a 3D model, then this is something you'll want to keep on. Now let's quickly talk about altitude. Like many people, I do most of my planning based on AGL or above ground. That's nice and easy because I know where the ground is and I know or can easily find out how tall things are. But the only option we have here is above sea level. When we set the height of the building, the ASL figures are filled in for us. In theory, you can see the ASL height by looking down in the corner. And as you move the mouse around, you'll see those values change. Because I wanted to avoid those trees, I increased the base altitude during the planning, but the ASL is off-putting and I didn't really add enough. Because of this, when I started to run the mission, I had to hit pause because it was obvious that it was gonna to start too close to the trees and then go back, edit the mission to raise the bottom by about another 80 feet. This editing happened on both sites I flew. And since you can only edit in Flight Hub, I strongly recommend bringing a laptop with you when you're running these missions. If you're capturing a larger building, you're probably going to have to walk around following the drone to keep line of sight and not lose signal. That's going to be much easier if the route goes up and down the building instead of going completely around it multiple times. Fortunately, you can choose to have the drone fly horizontally or vertically around the building and so I switched to vertical flight. Now make any other adjustments such as the speed, etc. Save it and you're ready to capture. Now let's quickly show you how to do this using a cylinder. For this, we're going to set up the capture at a large chimney. As before, start a new route and select geometric route. But this time we will switch to cylinder instead of polygon. 
mark the center point and move to the outer edge of your capture. Now change to the 3D view and set the altitude as before. The chimney isn't very wide, so we want to bring in the distance to the surface. That will adjust not only the distance, but also how many orbits around the object are needed. Note that as you get closer, it will start giving you warnings to keep an eye on things. Once again, make any last minute adjustments and then hit save. Now we're ready to go outside, capture this and process it to see what the results look like. I'm going to start with the Sheraton Hotel. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I did have to go in and edit the lower altitude to avoid the trees. But having done that, you can see that it is now moving up and down the building as it slowly rotates around it. I didn't capture the whole building as I was just using this as an example. But if we switch over to the chimney at the hospital, you can see we have the same effect. One thing I did want to show here is what happens after the sides have been captured. Assuming that you left the top capture on, you'll see that it flies across hatch pattern. But as it does so, it changes the camera angle to capture facing the building, looking down at the building, and then facing back towards the building. This is called an oblique capture, and it's very useful when performing 3D reconstructions. Finally, here's what it looks like once I process the photos into a 3D model. You can use whatever software you like for this, in this case, I used Polycam, and I'll place a link to the model in the video description so you can take a look at it and play around. Anyway, that's it. A quick intro to geometric roots. I hope you found that useful. As always, I love to hear your questions, so feel free to leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next video.